The rescue of Silicon Valley Bank raising concerns about moral hazard, about the state of the U.S. banking system, and the next move on interest rates. Will the collapse of one of the biggest banks force the Fed to reevaluate plans to keep tightening? We already have several calls for a pause. I'm joined now by David Bonson, Chief Investment Officer at the Bonson Group. What about the piece of regulation Dodd-Frank that kind of enshrined the current financial system? Yeah, look, Dodd-Frank regulates laws and rules. You can't regulate judgment. And I am completely bewildered and betwixt as to where the lack of regulatory judgment was. Yeah, this is the search for yield problem, right? When the Fed pumps the system full of liquidity, but at, at the same time, interest rates are so low that they can't make much money, what they do end up taking is more risk. And that's where the supervisors have to be more active, trying to look at what banks are doing. Clearly, as Aaron says, a bank which is funded with 93% uh, wholesale deposits, which are very runnable, and investing it in long-term bonds when the Fed is going to raise interest rates. I mean, that should be red flag, red flag, red flag after red flag for the regulators. David, let me bring you in here, uh, sort of broaden it out and put this in context. I saw you nodding along as we're having this discussion. Do you favor what uh, the government did here? Do you think that this was the right move both for the public and for the markets? Similar to so much of what would happen after 2008, I don't think the major issue is what they did today. It's all the things that built up to making today necessary. I agree with everything both of the prior guests said. I cannot believe the president dared to say, well, we just need more regulation. We're going to get more regulation to keep this from happening again. I thought they already did that. As a matter of fact, they promised the American people they did. This is such a failure of competence that I can't believe people put up with it. And the one thing I'll add that the other two guests didn't get into is the Fed's culpability, not merely as the regulatory overseer, but as the setter of monetary policy. That easy monetary policy that they left on way too long after the COVID emergency is what enabled that deposit base to go up so much. All the silly IPOs and SPACs and, and the shiny objects, that ridiculous crypto story, that's how that deposit base came Came up and then they over tightened and they destroyed value on the way down. The Fed is at the scene of the crime all the time. And they were in this case on the way up and the way down. Are, do you think, David, the taxpayers are going to be on the hook in, in some way, shape or form for this? The key word is some way, because it won't be direct. They're not bailing out the, the shareholders or even unsecured bondholders. And by the way, they really didn't bail out the shareholders with TARP either, right? Citigroup stock went down 98%. So no, Silicon Valley stockholders will appropriately be wiped out. But it's still going to be paid for by the taxpayers in the sense of the banking system incurs the cost, and they pass that on to people who bank, to depositors, to savers. They're still a hidden cost that we end up absorbing. And, and I think that they cannot make the mistake they made with Fannie and Freddie, leaving that guarantee implicit. Let's answer the question and let's answer it now. Is there unlimited FDIC insurance or not? David Bonson, which way does this leave the market positioned? And we have on the one hand calls for the Fed to, to pause, which would seem bullish. We see the Dow reaction. With, you know, it's still green barely today. Although a number of uh, kind of big name investors I spoke with over the weekend are themselves bearish. Um, what, where do you come down on this? How, how should people be thinking through what it feels like a backstop on the one hand and, you know, a cracking financial system on the other? Yeah, I mean, essentially, in the very short term, people should expect this ongoing volatility and uncertainty. But I do believe that the Fed now has had their uh, tightening done for them. The, the quantitative tightening is done. They've taken so many excess reserves now out of the system. These small cap banks can't afford to have more tightening. Um, and I just want to point out that it is untrue that these depository, uh, that these institutions don't have options above $250,000. Treasury bills have unlimited capacity with federal government guarantee. So the, the deposit insurance with FDIC refers to a simple bank account. These companies holding hundreds of millions of dollars can go do regular corporate cash like everybody else does above those limits. There's same day settlement. There's no real friction for them to go into treasuries and other uh, securities to be able to uh, achieve that liquidity need and principal protection with appropriate guarantees. 
I, I, but I think as far as where the market goes from here, there's no question. If the Fed gets one more rate hike in, that's the most they will get. They are one and done at the most. A lot of companies use cash management uh, 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 software that distributes to insured accounts. It's a one way to do it. And as uh, David was talking about, the ability to uh, use corporate cash in a variety of other ways is, uh, right. is, is, is out there. And they shouldn't have had all that money in the bank.